And in with us, the head football coach of the Cornhuskers, Matt Rule. Tomahawk steaks. You can't go wrong with that at Misty's. He put down two of those bad boys, huh? <laughs> That's what he said. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know that I saw that, but uh, it's impressive <laughs> if he did. Well, congratulations. This is a culmination of a lot of work from a lot of different people. Your thoughts about this group? Well, I'm, I'm just grateful uh, to all the, the players who made a decision to come here, their families. Um, you know, we honor that and we take that very seriously. You know, um, my wife and I, Julie, um, our son Brian's coming to Nebraska next year as a freshman. And so we understand probably more so now than ever how big of a decision that is. And so when people send um, their, their, their sons, when young men decide to place their future in our hands, man, we take it. We take it with honor and we take that uh, very seriously. So I'm excited. I think it's a great group. Um, I think, uh, I think uh, it's been a lot of work. R really grateful for our staff. Really grateful for the, the athletic department. Um, you know, when you, can take, uh, when you can take recruits to a wrestling match, you can take them to a women's basketball game, when you can be talking about our unbelievable Husker uh, volleyball team and people all across the country are talking about it with you, it just builds excitement about being at Nebraska. So, so many people have done so much, former players. I mean, I think it's really cool that, you know, six former players, sons, coming to play for us. Uh, 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 one brother of a, of a current player, um, one nephew of two former players. I mean, just a lot of family ties. So it just shows, shows me that the ties run deep and that this means something. Let's start close to home. What kind of year was it in the state for kids coming out of high school? Yeah, I think it, it was it was really good for us scholarship wise. I think second year in a row that we signed you know eight players in state, and a really 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 strong uh, non scholarship walk on group. And a lot of guys will play a lot of football. A lot of guys will earn scholarships. Um, our summer camps were vital. I think we did a great job on getting uh, the best players in, in the state to come to camp. And a lot of those guys just want an opportunity, and they're going to get one. Bell West High School was good to you this year with three of them. Yeah, three three players for the first time I think uh, in a long time to have three players from one high school. You know, Coach Huffman does an amazing job. Um, really, the high school football all across the state has impressed me, and um, to to have those three guys come here is uh, really a good thing for us. You know, we wanna we wanna be really strong close to home. Two top one of those kids from Bell West is Daniel Kalen. You get two top notch quarterbacks in this class. Your thoughts about those two guys? Well, um, you know, we want to have a really strong quarterback room, and we want to have a quarterback room where we teach the guys, uh, you know, our way of playing football from, from preparing and studying to reading defenses. You know, we don't want it to be every year a, a different guy coming in. And so uh, to have the ability to, you know, train two young men from the ground up, uh, two excellent players. You know, Daniel's really an unbelievably quick processor, uh, sees the field, gets the ball out of his hand, great feet. I had a chance to go watch Dylan throw the ball. <clears throat> you know, I've been to a lot of pro days in the last couple of years of my time in the NFL. Don't know if I've ever seen anyone throw the ball quite as well as he can do it. So uh, a lot of talent, a lot of work ahead, and I'm excited that those guys wanted to be here. Dylan is, a, a, both of them, elite 11 quarterbacks, and they're both six foot three. Those, those are pretty big-sized kids, both of them. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, uh, they're both big, powerful men. They're going to... They're going to stand strong in the pocket and not get injured, and uh, there's, there's a lot of benefits to having a big quarterback. Um, and uh, you know, I think you, you look at uh, you look at Dylan's you know size. You know, obviously with his father, you know, being a former <laughs> offensive lineman, he's got a, a lot of power in his body. And uh, the same is true for Daniel. Got long, great length. Um, you know, two really good players. Speaking of big men, this class is loaded with some guys along the offensive line and I know you talked all fall about how your numbers were down in that room you needed to get some numbers up in that offensive line room yeah um, you know you want you want to be at you know 16 you know nothing but 16 maybe 17 guys and uh, we've been able to do that and um, uh, the great thing about most of the guys that we have we've had them in camp we've been able to see them live they have the skill sets that we're looking for the attributes that we're looking for and um, you know we're, we're building that line you know the hard way we're doing it with Guys we've recruited, guys we're going to, going to de develop, and um, I really like the group. I like seeing them live in, at camp. I like seeing their movement and their explosiveness and excited to coach them. You mentioned camp. That's become pretty apparent. That's really a valuable time for you to get eyes on them, whether it's a camp here or whether it's a camp you go somewhere else and see them there. That's a big part of it, isn't it, to get that evaluation done? Yeah, I think you know when you're, when you're talking about evaluation, obviously you want good football players. You want guys who play well on tape. But they have to have certain traits, you know, height, weight, speed, movement, uh, explosiveness, change of direction. And so 
uh, when you can do it live, it's, uh, it's really beneficial. And um, there's also something to me about a guy that you know, maybe has an offer and still wants to come to camp. Yeah. He's got a competitive streak. Uh, I, I'm looking for that. Uh, competition is king. And you know, somewhere along the way, sometimes I think we've, we've kind of gotten rid of that. Everyone's looking for the best situation. Mm-hmm. Like, go make your situation the best situation and go compete. And uh, when guys come to camp, it shows me that they believe in what they can do and they do want to compete. And so I love it. I love the creativity that you and your staff did. You, you took that big semi out, took it over to, to Grant Bricks' high school, and then out to go see Carter Nelson's high school as well. I think it made a pretty big impression on both communities. Well, you know, um, Sean Patton, Vince Ginta, Ryan Callahan, Keith Williams, all those guys, they, they, they're, they're really, really, really visionary and smart. They have great ideas. Um, our our uh, creative team, Jordan Litton, led by C.J. Campbell, Warren May, those guys do an unbelievable job. And so even the graphics we have out today, you know, video games and famous Husker plays and still a highlight film. I mean, the amount of work our guys do is, is, is really impressive. And so to be able to go out and make an impact in, in communities and where we want young men to want to stay home, I think that's, that's vital. And um, I really, I've really uh, grown fond of the town of Ainsworth. I've loved getting to know uh, people out there, getting to know the community out there. Um, the same can be said for going out and seeing Grant and his community, um, eating at the Twisted Tail, meeting great people. Um, it's been a lot of fun for me. A shout out to my boy Tron. So um, uh, I just uh, just really enjoyed the whole process. Carter Nelson, let, let's talk about my Ainsworth, Nebraska. This love these kind of stories. This is a kid that's really talented, isn't he, Coach? Yeah, I mean, I think he could. Uh, I went to his uh, playoff game and I sat there and I'm like, well, he could, he could probably play tailback, he could probably play wide out, he could probably play tight end, he could probably play on the defensive side of the ball. Um, so, you know, you start looking at a guy on offense that you can move around and use as a chess piece. And uh, that's our vision for him. Uh, we see him as a positionless player, uh, not necessarily a tight end, not necessarily, you know, he, he could play wide out, he could play running back. Uh, I think we're going to have a lot of fun with him over the next couple of years. You like those kind of guys. Though. I, uh, people that are special to me are the very first ones that commit to a class. Roger Gradney was, a, I believe, the first one that committed to this class and held it. Didn't even waver off of that, and he can play. Yeah, Roger's, um, Roger's an unbelievable young man from an unbelievable family. I've loved getting to know uh, his family and, and um, just, again, a big, powerful, explosive athlete. You know, you know go to Houston. Start heading west, you know, get out into, into sort of the rice farm, farmland, get out there, rice consolidated, and you, there's this unbelievable athlete, great football player. Um, you know, Coop and Omar and those guys found him early. Uh, we committed him, and as you said, uh, been unbelievably loyal to us along the way. Very good. Another thing that we've kind of noticed, you've really hit South Florida a little bit. I know you got some guys on the staff that have some connections down to that Miami area, but there's some talented athletes down there, aren't there? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, the thing I love about players from, from Miami is that, uh, you know, they've always, they play the game with a, a certain joy and passion. Like, they play it like it's recess, like they're just having fun playing ball. And um, as you said, to have Evan Cooper here, to have Phil Simpson here, uh, they've got such strong ties. And so we're not really doing all of Florida. We're really just kind of doing, like, you know, Dade County, like, you know, just true Miami. Yeah. And uh, it's been really good for us. We found some really great players from there and uh, able to get a couple guys to change their minds here late and, and, and come to us, which is, which is important. I think we have a graphic of, of where this class is from across the country. And it just shows, I think it shows the power of the brand still, right? About that Nebraska football still has a, a name that you can walk in in Montana or South Florida or Texas and people know uh, we're going to talk Cornhusker football right now. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, uh, um, you, you think you think about the, the impact of Nebraska football in Miami, all of those years yeah. of going to the Orange Bowl and you know talking to, talking to people's uncles and 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 dads and coaches and them them knowing what it means to, to when the Huskers come to town and so you know we've been very strategic you know we want to recruit the 500 mile radius we want to recruit Texas we've kind of really moved into uh, Florida and um, uh, you look you know. You, you look at the, those areas, those are, those are big football areas, and, and it should be, a, should be really a model that we follow moving forward for many years. Really good stuff there. Now, you've, a handful of these guys will be here in a couple weeks. How beneficial is that to you? And do you, do you encourage that, or do you let, leave it up to each individual? I think it's up to, to each individual. You know, if they want to run track, if they want to play on their high school basketball team, if, if they're not ready for college, then, then absolutely stay in high school and finish it. <clears throat> I think we'll have like 14, 15, 16 guys 
coming in mid-year, those guys get a jump. You know, uh, they get a jump academically. They get a jump athletically. You know, my goal for all of these guys is not just to leave with a degree, but leave with two degrees if possible. And so, you know, if you come in and, and, and start off with 15, degree, 15 uh, credits plus six in the summer, you're 21 before you even start your freshman year and you're off and running. So it's great when it's right for you. Uh, you saw that with Cam Lenhard and Prince Will and yep. those guys last year. Um, to get this many guys in mid-year is awesome. Helps us as we grow our team and replenish the guys that we lost. Having the guys that, that could have left uh, decide to come back, Ben Scott, Bryce, Ben Hart, Isaac Gifford, Johnny Bullock. Um, it's been really a good month for us. It's almost another addition to the class, right? Getting those guys for another year. Yeah, I mean, those are NFL, those are NFL guys. Those are, those are guys that if they went into the portal, other uh, people would be begging them to come. And, you know, we're getting guys that, you know, made some form of all Big Ten that want to stay here. Um, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's our own personal portal. <laughs> And I'd rather I'd rather be involved with the Husker portal than anything else. Only one portal addition today is Bly Hill, is a guy from the FCS level that's come on up. Omar Brown, that certainly made that jump and played pretty well for you on that as well. But you don't anticipate a huge jump in the portal this year. It's not going to be part of it. You're going to look at it, but not a huge number of guys. Yeah, we'll always look at it. Uh, Bly, is a, Bly is a really cool um, story. You know, six foot three corner who can run. Dad Leeway played the NFL for the Seahawks for many years. Mom, volleyball player, so comes from great athletic stock, you know, great athletic parents, a great young man, um, you know, went to the FCS level, had a lot of success. A lot of people kind of jumped on it, and uh, we um, were lucky that he wanted to come here. So losing Quentin Newsom, we have a bunch of talented young players that are ready to fill those spots, but uh, Bly is another guy that can, you know, join in, and it, it takes a lot of guys to play great defense. I mentioned a lot of offensive linemen. It's called a lot of DBs in this class as well. Boy, the competition to get on the field is going to be pretty intense in that group, isn't it? Yeah, I think the, the great thing about our defense is, um, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, sometimes I don't even know what position guys are playing, you know, they're, sometimes they're a corner, sometimes a safety. We signed a lot of safeties that we think are going to grow into 230-pound linebackers. So we want to be one of the fastest teams in the Big Ten. And uh, to do that, you have to. if you want to be fast, you have to recruit speed. I sat there, and, you know, Braylon Prude ran by me at a camp and at six foot four, ran 4'4", four, four, on my watch. And, you know, it's hard for me not to get excited about those guys. And so um, you take that and multiply it across a lot of other guys, and uh, uh, we'll have a lot of speed and a lot of guys competing to get on the field. Well, congratulations. This is the work of a lot. Of, you mentioned a lot of them. A lot of people put efforts into this. We, we hear from you. We hear from the assistant coaches. But there are a lot of people behind the scenes that this is their full-time job to go identify talent for you. Yeah, our, our personnel staff uh, does an unbelievable job. Um, you know, we have, we have people working on this, you know, 24-7. And, um, and, and when people come here, I think the one thing that they identify with is, is whether it's Kristen, you know, talking about our nutrition, whether it's Gus talking about our player development, Corey talking about the weight room. Uh, they get a sense of a cohesive family feel when they're here. Um, the best recruiters we have are our student athletes and uh, uh, the players in the program talking about what it means to be here. So um, I'm just grateful to all those people that they have sh painted a picture for what Husker football is and what we all expect it to be in the coming years. We have, you're going to announce by the end of the day, almost 40 new additions to the rosters. A handful of them are going to be preferred walk-ons. You've now lived 12 months of this program, and how big a factor is the walk-on program? And has it changed your mind at all in the last 12 months? No, I mean, I, I, I the, probably one of the best players I ever coached was Hassan Reddick, and he was a walk-on, and he's probably the best player in the NFL right now. Yeah. Um, you know, I was a walk-on, Sat was a walk-on, Corey was a walk-on. Uh, to me, um, great players come in all different forms. They come in a lot of different ways. and. What I love about a guy who walks on is, is he loves the game so much, or in this case many times he loves the University of Nebraska so much he's willing to pay to wake up at 5.30 in the morning and work out every day. He's willing to pay to go out there and practice with no guarantees. And I, I love that. I love that grit and that determination and that toughness. What we've done is, you know, we're not going to have the same numbers moving forward. We're not going to be one of the larger rosters in college football just simply because that's been the directive, you know, from the athletic department, you know, making sure that we're in compliance with Title IX. So, well, we might not be able to be the biggest walk-on program. We, we can be one of the best, and we can, we can uh, recruit the highest caliber guys. And so we, we have players in this class who turn down scholarships at Division I schools to, to stay here and uh, be a part of this program. And, um, but I think when they come to the games and they see Phelan Sanford out there starting for us or John Bullock starting for us, they know that in this program they're going to get a fair chance. 
And that's all young people want. They want an opportunity to compete, and uh, we give it to them. And so I'm excited about that group. I'm just as excited about them as I am the scholarship guys. Fantastic. Congratulations to you and the staff. Thank you. Matt Rural with us here on National Signing Day. Our coverage will continue in just a few moments.